What up, what up, what is going on everybody, it's your boy Jazz, and welcome back to another Madden 15 online ranked match, and today we are going with the Denver Broncos going up against the Seattle Seahawks, definitely a uh, very interesting game. Now, <clears throat> as you guys can see from title, most points ever, this is the most points I've ever been able to score, but does it come in in a winning fashion? I can score a lot of points, and I'm known to give up a lot of points, baby. Oh, I'm known. I'm known, baby. When you're going up against me, expect to be scoring a lot. Hopefully, I can just put the pressure on you with my offense, and you make a mistake. That's what I'll, you know, whether your cat, you know, makes, you know, hits the wrong button, or you sneeze and hit X by accident, whatever. Whatever it is I can get to go my way, I'd take it, baby. I'd take it. So, Seattle being the most overpowering team in the game, I'm already feeling like it can be some trouble because Seattle is tough. If you know what you're doing with that team, they are a very, very, very tough team, even though they lost Sunday. But we could take an advantage of it, man. We lost. I actually slept that entire day. I'm going to get into it in another video later. <clears throat> so second and 19 right here, rolls out the pocket, and he ends up uh, not converting. So third and 19 with Russell Wilson. He likes to just roll out the pocket, and we end up getting to him, forcing a fourth and like 98 and he ends up punting the ball. So our first offensive possession is coming, and, and I feel good about that stop. So offense, we're running Oakland. Defense, we're running multiple defense, which is a snippet out of Dream Killer's uh, blueprint guide. We're running two blitzes, I believe, from there. So uh, right here, you know, trying to use the Broncos how they should be used, right? A lot of passing. A lot of passing just due to the fact that you got one of the best quarterbacks ever in Peyton Manning. In my opinion, he's... Number two, greatest of all time. Now, I'm not trying to start a debate on who's the greatest of all time. But in my opinion, it's Tom Brady at number one, Peyton Manning number two. I think Peyton Manning is one Super Bowl away. He has every record imaginable. Like, the only thing stopping this man from, in my opinion, from becoming the GOAT is another Super Bowl. You know, uh, and we all know how that worked out for him last year. But I feel like if we, I, I say we, like we're, uh, I'm a, Denver Broncos fan, but if Denver wins another Super Bowl with Peyton at the helm, I would put him, again, this is my opinion, I would put Brady at number two and I'll put Peyton Manning at number one. The reason why I have Brady at number one is that he's done more with less than I've ever seen besides Donovan McNabb, but Donovan McNabb unfortunately never won a Super Bowl, ended up losing to the Patriots in the Super Bowl, but um, was it the Patriots they lost to when they had T.O.? I, I think it was. If it wasn't, I may be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it was. But nonetheless, um, Tom Brady is, you know, he's done more with, like I said, besides McNabb. McNabb went, went to like 15 um, freaking NFC championships in a row with like Hank Basket Bums. Pure bums. All they had was Brian Westbrook, and McNabb would make a Vaughn, like just bums. <laughs> Look good. McNabb is a beast, man. But unfortunately, man, they never had the offensive tools to really do it. Um, he just needed one more. And that one time he had a dominant receiver in T.O., they went to the Super Bowl. And uh, even though T.O. got hurt, so they made it to the Super Bowl without him. And this, 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 this. Listen, Donovan McNabb had one dominant receiver in his career, and it was T.O. for that one year. He dominated that year. But anyways, listen, that, that's not. Anyways, uh, to me, Tom Brady's number one. And, uh, you know, you look at the teams they beat. They beat the Rams. Now, their defense was always solid, you know, but they beat the Rams. You know, um, if, if you look at their offense, like, who were their receivers? Just pure nobody. The, the receivers were just butt cheeks, you know. Um, and to me, again, this is all my opinion, they're two fluke plays from him winning two more Super Bowls. Like, he lost to Eli twice. But you look at the the gum on the helmet catch. You look at, what's his name? Da was it David Tyree? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whoever it was, that m the greatest catch in Super Bowl history probably if that doesn't happen, Patriots win. Most likely, Patriots win. I'm saying most likely. Who knows what would have happened, but most likely, Patriots win. Wes Welker, the second time, drops a wide-open pass. If he catches that, they have a chance at winning. So, it's like, he did, you know. I, anyways, I'm talking this way too long. Anyways, that's just my opinion. You know, Tom Brady's number one. Peyton Manning's number two. And uh, so, of course, you know, I wanted right there. Don't test the user. He is so disrespectful. That right there was an absolute nice little um, interception right there. And 21-0, we are feeling great. We are feeling like this game is, uh, you know, pretty much in hand. Uh, he hasn't been able to really move the ball against us consistently. Uh, bad, bad, bad read. But what the hell is Sherman doing there on the left? 
Everybody knows Sherman is on the right. I wasn't expecting big old rink dink Sherman to be on the right side. <laughs> Just bad, bad read by me. So, uh, right there goes to a read option, and we end that stuff in that quicker than the turkey on Thanksgiving Day. Goes over towards the middle, bat it down in double coverage. He's not really making good reads. You know, you can tell he, he's not the most experienced guy in the world, and we are taking advantage of that. Like, um, I've talked to some commentators, and, uh, hey, some commentators you wouldn't even believe do this, but it's, it's against my morals. You know, some people might, you know, let them, you know, because there's nothing more frustrating than to quit because that messes up your video. When you're trying to get gameplay, somebody quits. like, you got to do it again. You got to play over again, right? Um, so, obviously, at this point, you know, this guy didn't quit, obviously, and we have a full, you know, 12-minute gameplay. So, obviously, he stayed the entire game. But, you know, like, I would never purposely let up just to keep somebody in a game so I could not have to start over, you know. And, you know, I'm not going to let him score just to give him some hope so he cannot quit. If I have the opportunity to blow you out, I will blow you out. These opportunities don't come often. I'm usually in high, you know, close games. And look, another pick six right there. Well, did we get a pick? I don't know. Another user interception. We'll say that. And uh, 31 to 0 at this point. And, um, yeah, these opportunities don't come often. So, you know, if I, if I have the opportunity to blow you out, I absolutely will without even thinking about it. I, nope, I'm blowing you out. If you quit, that's fine. I'll just play with the team again. But if the if the opportunity presents itself where I could actually blow somebody out, I'm doing it. <laughs> again, these opportunities don't come often. So uh, shout out to my opponent for uh, sticking through. So right now, all we're pretty much waiting for is exactly how many points do we score since this is by far the most points I've ever been able to score in Madden 15. I've been able to crack 100 once in my life in an online ranked match, and uh, we actually posted that late, late last year. It was, I had the Chargers, and I forgot who we went up against, but we scored, I think, 100 even, like 100 on the dot. First time ever. Uh, I think I hit 70 once in Madden uh, 13. In Madden 25, we scored 100. Um, this year, so far, this right here is my most high-scoring game. Uh, like, right there, he should have passed it. You know, oh, another fumble, but he ends up recovering. So, uh, right now, at this point, we're like, you know, let's let's see. Let's, you know, see how many points we could put on. Let's see if we could uh, possibly get close to 100. You never know. So, we're going to try to make it do what it is, baby. Uh, run right there, and that right there definitely hurt our chances of being able to, uh, you know, pound it on, considering, you know, he's able to continue the drive. So, you know, uh, at, at this point, we know game is over. So, I'm just trying to see if I can get the ball back and score as much as possible. So, on third down, he decides to go for a run. Fourth down, he doesn't take his field goal. He's like, you know, F that. I don't care about this shutout. You know, I'm trying to score. And uh, picks up the first down. So, that right there, again, two fourth down opportunities. I had an opportunity to stop him, and he converted on both. So, as usual, I'm giving up plays on fourth down. Nothing new, right? I, I always do that. I do that way more than one human should possibly be able to do that. So, uh, right here, he rolls out. And he had plenty of time to find somebody. He goes over towards the middle, and we snag an interception. And he had the ball for a while. I think he started. Look, at that's the slowest double juke I've ever seen in my life. So, uh, right here, just trying to sneak in on the run. And, oh, man, if that block was picked up, we might have been able to take it the distance. So, uh, right here, still running the ball. You know, we're running the ball pretty effectively against him. He's leaving way too many holes for me to be able to, uh, you know, not run the ball. So, um just continuously running the ball, a fumble, but I believe it was overturned. Wait for it. Sherman looking at me, man, you getting blown out. Don't be looking at me like that. <laughs> so as you see, man, pancakes everywhere, and the, the run game is just absolutely destroying him. He's coming out in like these heavy pass coverage defenses, and we're just destroying him right there. First pass of the drive, quick inside, and we end up scoring 45 to zero at this point, and uh, we don't get anywhere near 100, <laughs> unfortunately. But like I said, it's the most points. We've ever been able to score. And uh, we usually have this debate every year. But you know what? Why not? YOLO. Uh, leave in the comment section your top three quarterbacks. Your top three quarterbacks of all time. You know, some people may go. Uh, some people go the championship route. You know, some people go with like Terry Bradshaw or, you know, Troy Aikman. Things like that. You know, quarterbacks who have been able to win, you know, multiple uh, rings. And uh, I understand that, you know, which is why when you look at it, Dan Marino is rarely mentioned due to the fact that he's never been able to win. Now, whenever you're comparing the greatest players of all time, they all have one thing in common, each and every single one of them. That's why they're in the talks of greatest players of all time. Their numbers are beyond normal. <laughs> you know, everybody has fantastic numbers. That is what makes them a great player. 
the fact that you look at their statistics and everybody, no matter who you're talking about, whether from Marino, Jim Kelly, uh, Troy Aikman, Steve Young, Joe Montana, John Elway, Brett Favre, they all have tremendous, amazing numbers. What separates these guys is when you start talking about rings. You start talking about Super Bowls. How many of these greatest players of all time were able to get it done and win championships? And uh, that's why you rarely see, Mon um, not Montana, but you rarely see uh, somebody like Dan Marino able to go on ahead and, you know, name number one and things like that. So some people go to championship route, I understand. Um, but like I said, I would go uh, Peyton, uh, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. Number three, um, me being biased would be Steve Young. Because I'm a huge Steve Young fan. He's my favorite quarterback. My favorite quarterback of all time. Uh, not the greatest of all time, but he's my favorite quarterback of all time. Uh, you know, I grew up watching him. He's the reason why I became a San Francisco 49er fan. But I would probably go with Joe Montana at number three. Uh, close between him and John Elway. You could flip-flop either or, you know, but I would go with Joe Montana because I'm biased and I'm a 49er fan. So uh, I'm going to go with Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, and we're going to go. We're going to end off with Joe Cool. So, uh, I would love to know, you know, your guys' top three. Let me know in the comment section. And let me know why. You know, you don't need to, not why for all three of them, but why, you know, number one. You know, if you got Brett Favre, number one, why is it that you have Brett Favre? Let me know. Yeah, is it because of the numbers, this uh, playoff history, whatever it is. Like, I know uh, Joe Montana has one of the greatest playoff stat lines in QB history. I think he, like, I don't think he's, ever thrown an interception in the postseason or something something ridiculous like that man he's like eight and zero in the playoffs with like 17 in touchdowns or like zero or one interceptions like his numbers are just stupid <laughs> like <laughs> just incredibly good but uh, that's the end of the video fellas we're gonna go on ahead and end it um we scored 59 our most of madden uh 15 so far this year love each and every single one of you guys man it's your boy jess and we will be signing out peace give it to me baby